Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ashi, and welcome to The Soapbox, a brand new series that will be focusing on topics that I'm passionate about and well versed in, which will obviously lead to more interesting commentary, which will obviously lead to you guys enjoying it much, much more. Topics will generally be about gaming and not specifically about Battlefield like this one is. So you might see a soapbox about YouTube, for example, or the Steam boxes, that kind of stuff. I did a pilot episode a few weeks back before the holidays. It wasn't called the soapbox because it was I was still sorting out things like the graphics, the name for the series, but it went over very, very well and was generally liked and it stirred up debate in the comments and on my Twitter and stuff. That of course was the Ashi rant video about Battlefield 4 and Dice dropping the ball. Since then, really after that video, everything has gone really downhill for Dice and EA when it comes to Battlefield 4, hasn't it? Developers and DICE staff have been mocking and trolling the community. Some developers have kept their mouths completely shut, but overall, there's been silence, and we're starting to see some of the staff come back finally from holidays. If you didn't know, in Sweden, which is where DICE is located, it's actually law for them to get five weeks of holiday. Which is absurd amount, but okay, fine. Some of them have been on holiday literally since the game released almost three months ago, but okay, whatever, fine, it is what it is. But in their absence, there's been a ton of heated arguments and discussion in our community. My opinion is that DICE has no excuse for releasing an unfinished game, bugged to all hell, broken game, and Ian needs to crack the whip. Some of them have a different opinion though. And usually these people defend DICE to the point of saying, they have no issue with the game at all, and shouldn't be badgering DICE and their developers on Twitter or through YouTube, and there's no reason for complaints and criticism. I've been using a name for them for quite a while on Twitter, and it's starting to stick. DICE Apologist. If you don't know what an apologist is, I have the definition here. A person who offers an argument in defense of something controversial. Of course, when using it, I want those who do fit that description to know it's absolutely meant to be insulting towards you. There's a lot of people out there that believe DICE can do no wrong, and that they're the best. Obviously, these people are out in full force now more than ever, and you can easily spot them with the brown stains on their nose. How shameful. DICE is not your friend. They're selling you a product, and that product is broken, yeah? You are a consumer, and that's it. There's of course no point in arguing with these people because they'd rather die than admit DICE has done anything wrong. You can't rationalize with an irrational person, and an apologist is as rational as they come. There is however people in the community, content producers like myself, who have tried very hard to be positive about the game. Some have outright ignored the issues and kept on making videos because they don't want to see that Battlefield gravy train stop prematurely. Some of these big channels big names, some of your favorites, and I admit some of mine, are often given exclusives. This means they are sent footage and in most cases, in some, or sorry, some cases, are flown out to DICE to be shown upcoming stuff. They are given exclusives like early unboxing, reviews, DLC, and in most cases are allowed to live stream or upload this footage to YouTube before anybody else. In our world, that's a developer or publisher, in most cases, handing out a golden brick and telling you, go cash it in. Even if this footage is out there, other channels like myself are not allowed to post this footage because of embargoes. And don't tell me I'm bitter because I could honestly care less, and I'll tell you why. That's corruption in my eyes. We are individuals who offer our individual opinions on games, DLC, mechanics, story, and in some cases, like this one, how awful a game is. The best thing about it is that we're not faceless companies like IGN or GameSpot, who are driven by ad placements on their websites by companies like EA, Activision Blizzard, or Ubisoft. We are instead networked through companies like Machinima, Polaris, or TGN, who give us impunity and opportunity to have free speech without the fear of a big company, like for example EA. This means our videos don't get taken down because they don't like what we've said, and they can't cancel ads on an entire network like Machinima because of what a single individual said. It just cannot happen. Instead, they have done something sneaky, and something that I'll admit is interesting to myself, but to a point. 
They fly content producers like myself to events like conventions or Battlefield Showdown, where they flew out dice friends and put them in a hotel and gave them access to the game early and promoted them through official EA dice and Battlefield social media channels. In some cases, it's free games, shirts, or dog tags. Now, some of you might say this is nothing new and this is how business is done regularly and it's conducted constantly with companies like Gawker or G IGN. That doesn't make it right because if you look how those companies talk about the game, they actually get away with stories on their website about the game being buggy well after release, after they already gave it a 9 out of 10. Now why is this bad for us as content producers? Because we're not big companies. Instead, we're individuals with weaknesses and wants and needs. A want for more growth, a need for more attention, and yes, some are purely driven by money. These are people that are flown out to events such as Battlefield Showdown. They are people still, for whatever reason, are pushing Battlefield 4 esports on a daily basis, even though Battlefield as an esport is at this point laughable. And I don't have to name names. These are the people that we're playing the game early. And I have a serious question for those people. Were you so blind that you couldn't see a one hit kill glitch? How about any of the other glitches or bugs? How about the obvious balance issues? How didn't you spot these things? They either lied about it at the time or were too stupid to notice. Which is it? I have a feeling it's more lying about it and I'll tell you why. And I must thank Scanner Barkley for this explanation. Loyalty. And I don't mean loyalty or honesty to the subscribers or audience, which is all we as YouTubers in the gaming community owe our audience. I mean loyalty to EEA, to the publishers that have given them the golden brick of exclusives and early access. Content producers like myself know if you're on their side, they'll be on yours. We scratch their back, they scratch ours. The problem with that, it completely takes out the spirit of what YouTube is and what we're trying to accomplish here. We are not review websites like IGN and GameSpot. Sometimes a game is bad, and we say bad things about said game. We are opinionated people who aren't paid off and shouldn't be. But those big names at the top know if it isn't them, it'll be somebody else. It's sad. It's a sad, sad world, but it's how it works. It's business, they call it. I said bullshit. It's your fucking word and ethic, and you have failed yourself and your audience that trust you. On the other side of things, there's people out there like yourselves who have no stake in any of this except for the $120 that went into EA's hands when you bought Battlefield 4 and Premium, and in some cases, a whole lot more if you bought it on a different console and had to upgrade to the next one. For some, that's a lot of money. And when you pay that sort of money for a single game and it's unfinished and it's unreleased content isn't coming. You expect a product that works, functions, and releases said unfinished content. But no, there's people out there, regular people, that still believe and don't understand what's going on here. We gamers need to be more skeptic and much more protective with our money because we're rewarding the wrong people. They have our money already. For anyone that thinks they're in a rush to fix anything and that DICE has stopped production on Mirror's Edge 2 and Star Wars Battlefront and they won't release DLC until it's fixed, you're living in a dream. And you need to wake up and stop trusting big faceless companies that don't actually care. Why do I say don't trust them? Why do I say they don't care? Because they will do it again unless you, you the consumer, and us the YouTubers with the powerful voice to tell them they cannot act like this. It's Consumer Rights 101. You let them know that this cannot happen and that is an unacceptable way of doing business because if you do not, they will be committed to repeat it. Why? Because they can get away with it. And they know they can get away with it because, with it because no one speaks up. Everyone pre-ordered for a beta or a single gun early. It's unacceptable. This industry has taken its consumers and literally ran them through the mud. Countless times. And there's hardly any consequence and they know it. Stand up for yourself. 
I'm willing to do it, and I could lose any day. I could disappear tomorrow for speaking up, but I won't pre-order Battlefield 5 or Titanfall. I also wouldn't trust anyone but an outspoken YouTuber when it comes to review, and I've already explained why. Getting back to my point and why you shouldn't trust EA or DICE, why? Because they're saying they stopped production on Mirror's Edge 2, Star Wars Battlefront. Guess what? EA released another press release to shareholders saying nothing was delayed, even though production stopped at DICE until Battlefield 4 was fixed. They stopped production on two games to fix Battlefield 4, but those two games are coming out as predicted. That's EA's own words. That should send off alarms. Big, loud, red flashing alarms. That means internally, the release date is already set in stone. That's another two rush, possibly unfinished games coming soon with day one patches. Maybe. They've learned nothing from Battlefield 4's release. Enough of that. I have an article in the description below if you'd like a short uh, read on apologists in the gaming community. It's from 10 Ton Hammer and it talks about SOE and all you have to do is replace really dice throughout the article and the shoe fits perfectly. In the next couple weeks I'll still be producing content I had planned for Battlefield 4 but once that runs out, if we're still in the situation that we're in now, don't expect more and to be honest why would you because I know you stopped playing the game too. <laughs> I've been looking at some very impressive looking indie games, especially indie horror games, and I've been looking to putting them on the channel. I've also been looking to do Titanfall stuff, but, you know, the game's looking impressive. The 6 for 6 thing has really turned me off. I'm, I'm, I might do a soapbox about it, I'm thinking, but because it's an EA product, I'm still very skeptical, and I've kept my distance, and please, don't, don't pre-order Titanfall. I'm begging you. Let me or some other YouTuber give you a review and tell you to buy it if it's a good game. Don't buy it day one. I can say I'll be doing a lot more Let's Plays and the whole format is something a lot of you guys will probably recognize. I'm going to try to do it a little bit differently, but I know for a fact you guys will enjoy it. So till then, keep your head up and stop giving undeserving companies your money. Thank you for watching. If you guys want to share this with the world, I'd be more than grateful, and a rating would be great. I'll see you guys later. Peace.